man, this is insane. Okay guys, so I am in the Netherlands right now, which is one of my favorite countries, and I'm here for a festival, like a big festival called Amsterdam Dance Event. So you can tell I'm in Amsterdam, which is the cultural, the financial, and the creative heart of the Netherlands. So I'm gonna try to explore as much of the city as I can in one day, without really taking an in-depth dive into the history like I usually do, because that would take forever. And the day's only gonna last so long, and it's like cold and rainy, like it always is in the Netherlands, whenever I visit, it seems. So I'm gonna try to see what I can film, what I can show you about the culture, the food, and like some hotspots in the city. By the way, I got to my hostel last night uh, from Romania, which was like a long day of traveling, which is why uh, I woke up right now at 11. So I'm staying on the east side of the city in this hostel called the Generator Hostel, which is usually like a quiet place, you know? In most places I've been to like generators like Germany and whatnot. This one seems to have a DJ like playing house music and techno last night even, so it's pretty cool. So just met this guy outside my house and like walked with me for like 10 minutes while he was bicycling. Whether it's like very common to like bike your way, everyone around here, the bicycle. But I'm not confident going long distances in Amsterdam out of all places because it's got the craziest bike traffic and uh, people don't like tourists that are going slow. They'll give you like angry bells and stuff. But anyways, this guy was being super nice, was from the States and all. But then it turned out he was trying to sell me some stuff because he found out I was going to the festival tonight. It's still sunny, might as well like go out and do some stuff. It's like I'm mainly here for AD. And then he was very persistent. I'm like, okay, he's not being friendly, he's trying to do business here. Say no, say no. Anyone, anytime, selling yourself on the streets, anywhere, say no. I know Amsterdam has a reputation for a lot of things, but you don't want to buy stuff off the streets off of random people. That's just like a recipe for disaster. So the cool thing in the Netherlands in 2023 and a lot of other countries in Europe is that you don't need to get like a card anymore separately for like metro tickets, you can just use your credit card, just make sure you tap on the way out. Okay, so I just got off the metro at Amsterdam Central or Central Station and that station right there on the other side of the canal is basically how I came here yesterday. I took a train from uh, Brussels all the way and this train station in a sense is at the center of the old historic town of Amsterdam. A little bit about the history. This used to be like a fishing village back in the 12th century but in the 17th century the Netherlands despite being this tiny country because of their naval prowess and like their abilities in business and honestly involvements in the slave trade along with a lot of other things and colonialism. You know, Indonesia was a Dutch colony. It's because of all those things. The Netherlands became an economic powerhouse and Amsterdam became one of the biggest or the most important ports in all of Europe. And at one point, it was arguably the biggest financial center in Europe as well. Amsterdam actually has one of the largest old towns in Europe. There's like 7,000 buildings that are registered as historic old town buildings. So anywhere you go in the old town, you see like these beautiful, gorgeous, ancient buildings. Like the ones around me. How's it going? Okay, if you haven't noticed it already in this video, there are a lot of canals in Amsterdam. There's like a hundred 45 of them, and there's 150 canals in Venice. That's why it's often called Venice of the North. Canals have been historically a very important part of the city in connecting different parts of the city to each other. And you can even like come here now and get a canal tour. Like you can get on this like one hour cruise ship. So they'll like take you to a bunch of the historic spots that you can see from the canals. You can also actually get in like a canoe or like go kayaking and uh, explore the canal yourself. I'm not gonna do that right now, but I was actually in uh, Utrecht like three months ago when it was like a bit warmer. And back then I did go like exploring in uh, one of these kayaks. <laughs> and it was a lot harder than I thought it was. There was actually a current and we kept crashing over and over again into the right side of the canal. I think it's the current. Okay. Oh shit. Oh. Speaking of the canal cruises, I just saw one passing underneath this bridge right here. There's actually like 1500 bridges in Amsterdam too, which is a lot. So one thing to note about the canals is like a lot of people actually die every year. Like 25 people on average drown in these canals. And the most common way people drown is it's like drunk men who try to pee in the canal and they fall in. And there's like no ladders for you to come out of it. And if you're like 
intoxicated. You're probably not gonna be like fine stuff in the middle of the night and no one's gonna be around to help you. So if you ever need to pee in the middle of the night, try to find a bathroom first. If you can't, like, you could try to find a tree, but you might get a fine for that. But if you pee in the canal, you might like die. So like, don't pee in the canal. So the streets of Amsterdam are very narrow because this is like a pretty old town. So you gotta watch out. The sidewalks are even narrower. Someone might hit you with the bike <laughs> if you're not paying attention. If you're on your phone too much looking at Google Maps. I find this city so beautiful. It's like surreal to visit every single time. It's a bit dirty in the center for sure, but uh, it's got its own old Dutch charm to it that I can't really put into words. <laughs> so now I'm in this market on the west side of the city, which I believe is called like Noorder, Noorder Market. I can't really pronounce that words. But it's supposed to be a really cool market on Saturdays and I came in and I just saw like a lot of ladies selling flowers at first, tulips. The Netherlands is known for its tulips, if you didn't know that already. And there are people selling a lot of clothes, which I didn't expect to see. And uh, jewelry and stuff like that. And uh, hopefully I can find some food soon. This market seems to have everything from like carpets to fresh produce to cheese. So the Netherlands is not internationally famous for its food, but one thing it is known for is having like really good cheese. I went to this one stall on the flea market, tried some cheese and uh, then tried another one which is supposed to be like a little more spicy and uh, it's like Gouda cheese made with like sheep milk. Uh, Gouda? Gouda. Yeah. It was delicious. So I got myself like a little piece that cost like, actually it's a pretty big piece. I'm not probably not going to finish this or take it to the next country but this is like only 6 or 6.75 euros or something like that. Our system here is really nice. Like you pick a slice as big as you want it and then like they weigh it and determine the price and I think this one is like 3 euros 70 cents per 100 grams so I took like almost 200 grams let's say which is a lot of cheese for some people but I can eat a lot of cheese let's try a bite okay so I found out later that this is not how you're supposed to eat cheese but more on that later mmm this is hard I like it. By the way guys, this uh, area that was just in with the flea market and everything, it's called the uh, Jordan district. So historically this used to be like a working class neighborhood for people in Amsterdam because that's pretty much the only place working class people could afford to live. But now it's become like a really hip part of town with a lot of cool cafes and everything and a lot of pretty houses. So I definitely recommend making a trip here on the western side of Amsterdam, leave the center, come here to see some really pretty stuff. So behind me right now is the former house of Anne Frank, or I think Anne Frank, something like that, as it's pronounced in Dutch. She was a Jewish person living here until World War II started, basically, because uh, Netherlands historically has been a very tolerating place for people from different religions, so it always had like a significant minorities of other religions. Uh, World War II happened, and uh, Nazi Germany took over the Netherlands, including Amsterdam, and uh, sent pretty much everyone, including Anne Frank, to the gas chambers, basically killed her. I read the book. You might have heard of the book or read the book uh, Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank and um, this is written by her. I've never actually been inside the house because I think you need to like reserve it like months in advance but you can come and at least like see the exterior. So the festival I'm going to, ADE, is not like your traditional festival with like one big arena with all the stages there. It's actually like a hundred different venues spread out throughout all of Amsterdam. Looks like I'm walking past one right now. So one kind of food that Amsterdam is really famous for is uh, stroopwafel, which is basically like waffles with a lot of syrup. And I was told this one place near me has some really good stuff, so I'm gonna go try that out. So I basically walked past this shop that is like really famous for its like French fries. The Netherlands in general has like really good French fries or Belgian fries, whatever you call it. And I thought the line for this place was kind of long, but then I realized that's like 10% of the line. This line stretched out for like two blocks over a bridge and uh, so many people are waiting. And like there's like security guards making sure no one's cutting in line and making sure the line doesn't get on the streets itself, so it's pretty crazy. the next spot and I saw a bit of an 80 street parade going in front of me and it was like crazy people were going crazy and I was just like dancing with them for like the last um, 
30 minutes or something like that because they had like all kinds of different trucks with different music. At first it was acid techno. It was like hard techno but like remixes of like classic 2000 songs. It's a picture or a movie? It's a movie. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, watch out to the bikes. Take me to your fantasy. <laughs> Just like that. It started to rain. So I'll need my jacket for the rest of the day. Quick announcement, there's a lot of things to see in Amsterdam uh, that I'm not gonna get to cover in this video. So I'm writing a blog post that I'll link in the video description, which is gonna be on my website. It's free to read, you can see and learn about uh, all the places you can visit, including the ones covered in this video, and some that I haven't covered, and it'll have some tips on how to get around Amsterdam and just practical stuff you need to know about visiting Amsterdam, if you're planning to visit Amsterdam. All right, back to the video. I'm at another open-air street market called Albert Kuyp, which is the biggest one in Amsterdam. And I'm finally gonna try to get the Stroop waffles that I was trying to get a long time earlier. And the perfect. Yeah, I go open. And then try. Have a nice day. You too. This is Stroop waffle, like an Amsterdam favorite. Oh my god, this is leaking. It's basically waffles with this syrup inside it, which is delicious and hot. Oh my god. And the syrup has like caramel, butter, and spices, and then there's a chocolate topping. Okay, I'm gonna take a bite. Really good. Mmm, taco size, but even better. The syrup is so nice and warm. Oh man, I'm wasting syrup. This is amazing. So good, so sweet. Oh my god, like syrupy ends. Okay, I'm gonna stop filming and clean up my mess. So behind me is one of the few windmills that's actually in Amsterdam. Even though Netherlands is known for their windmills, because the whole country is actually like, or most of it is underwater. So they needed windmills traditionally to like pump water out of the land so the farmers could like farm something, food or whatever, on their land. But that's not what they're mainly used for anymore. The one behind me is called uh, the Huier Molen. Molen means windmill and G is pronounced like a H. In the Netherlands, at least in the north and the south, it's pronounced like a zhe. It took me a long time to learn. I had a roommate named Gertjan from Nijmegen. So I had to learn that the hard way with a long, long time. But anyways, uh, most of the windmills are not actually used for pumping water out anymore, but they're like pretty old windmills you can find all around the country. There's actually this like village near the Netherlands, near Amsterdam, sorry. You can take a train to and get like, see a bunch of really beautiful windmills, but like it's too rainy for me to go out and do that and see like some windmills in the rain. So I'm just coming to the one that's in the city. The windmill behind me right now has been turned into a brewery where you can come and have a beer in the middle of the city or like east of the city basically. Then it was time for me to try some Dutch food with a really good friend of mine from the Netherlands you might have seen before. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, croquette. It's like a Dutch food. Uh -huh. That's the first one. That's the first one. To yeah. See if it's hot. Go for it. Not that hot? No. Okay. Uh, we're doing a food tour with Mikhail from Shalanda. For those of you that remember. What was it like? Egg hoppers? Spicy egg hoppers. Mm -hmm. How was it? It's good. Spicy. Very spicy. <laughs> this is cooking. Ah. Good, no? Yeah. Can you pass? Oh. Have you got the herb? This is Bamish. Okay. Bamish, guys. Oh, this is like vegetarian, I think. Like. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, in here are literally noodles. Bami. Some festival thing. Alright, we got two different things. First one is a Bami, which is basically like rice noodles that has been deep fried. And the second one is Frikandal Special, which is, I don't know, like a sausage with beef and chicken. This is what, like, was this one three euros or four euros? Uh, like 350? 350? Okay. This is like three euros, so we're gonna split these two. I wanna like split this up first, like, just to see what. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we wanna see the noodles. I wanna see the noodles inside it. Like. So, oh yeah, that's the noodles. Which one do you wanna try first? Cheers. Cheers. Really good. A good one. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to be Dutch Chinese food. It's like the most underrated Dutch snack. You can also eat this with mayonnaise or something. Most, most people would get it with mayonnaise. So you can take this one. Yeah, do the honors. So you've got like a small piece. And normally, normally they put it inside. 
but now they just put it under it. I don't know why, but <laughs> okay, doesn't matter. In, inside the thing, or how do they? Yeah, they like they they um, split it open. Yeah. And then they just literally like the sauce a bit messy. Yeah. <laughs> Very messy. Right. It's a very interesting place. Mm -hmm. What's the name again? Uh, Frikandel. Frikandel. So the, the sausage is Frikandel. Mm -hmm. And then special. So like special. Mm -hmm. It's with onions, curry and mayonnaise. Take as many onions as many onions. And then we have to cut it. <laughs> Pretty good. It's not the most healthy, but it's very nice. Nothing I eat on this channel. <laughs> and a fucking um, screw buffle, and then like, what else do they eat? Cheese! And then a whole chunk of cheese. No, that's not healthy. Man. This is what Dutch people do. No, they don't. But. <laughs> So apparently, I was not supposed to eat a block of cheese the way I did. We don't eat it like this. We don't. Don't, don't take bites out of your block of cheese. <laughs> how, how do you eat it normally? Like you mix it with something? Uh, you have a block of cheese, yeah. and then you have like a gas type, like a cheese cutter. Yeah. And then you go over it, and then you have. Oh, a, like slice. Yeah. Like, like normal people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or you can also just buy it and slice it. That's also possible. Yeah, that's probably the way. <laughs> Wanna eat this? <laughs> no, no oh man, don't do it. <laughs> Terrible. Now I was trying to try some very popular Middle Eastern food in the Netherlands. So this is Kapsalon, which is basically doner or like shawarma. What is it like? Uh, yeah, do doner. Doner? Okay. Oh, I think they made it with chicken though. Oh no, no, doner. Yeah. Okay. Doner, which is like beef or what is that like? With fries uh, and what's I think beef, yeah. a lot of cheese, right? At like the bottom it's fries, okay. and then it's donut. Yeah. And then they throw cheese on top, and then they put the salad. Per <laughs> capsule on, it's yeah. like 1300 calories, something like that. That's like, yeah, splitting it is a good idea. Yeah. So Most of the time you eat it with, um, with so garlic sauce and garlic uh, sauce and ketchup. Sambal. It's like a, no, it's not ketchup, it's a sambal, like hot sauce. Hot sauce? Okay. Yeah. Pour as so much as I, 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 I can eat hot see, sauce. Yeah. Can you see how spicy this is? <laughs> okay. This is like egg hoppers all over again. Like, <laughs> yeah. okay. You can do the hot sauce yourself because I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it on my part, like not on yours. Okay. I'll just put it on my side. So. <laughs> all right. Oh, it's hot, like steaming. How's it? Good. Pretty good. Yeah. I'm gonna try this capsulon with the hot sauce. I'm trying to get some cheese and fries. <laughs> it's gonna be messy, but I'll just be ready <laughs> in advance. I can't. <laughs> it's a big bite. <laughs> mm. oh. It's good. Mm. Alright, so the night before yesterday, we tried all that food, and then Mikhail and I went off to different festivals because the 80s is just so many festivals or so many sorry parties happening at the same time so basically I went to this show in the Ziggy Dome which had the craziest line I've ever seen to see my favorite DJ Amelie Lenz and it was a really good time And then the next day I went to this uh, other arena in Amsterdam called NDSM and there were a couple of good shows over there too. And then it was time for me to leave Amsterdam and ADE. And then yesterday I took the bus to Brussels over here. Spend the night here. I was supposed to catch a flight to Cyprus, but I think I've spent like just too much time filming in the last couple of weeks. So I'm just gonna take a break, chill and edit so I can catch up on the edits. But um, that is it for this video. So if you liked it, don't forget to like it. If you want to watch more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. And if you want real-time travel updates, feel free to follow me on Instagram at on the go. I'll catch you guys in the next video from probably not Europe, because I think I'm done filming in Europe for this year, because it's getting cold, if you can't tell.